Okay, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session on Code Without Barriers virtual meetup. We'll be discussing more on Crash Course into Copilot Studio. And today we have our guest speaker, Andre, who is a Microsoft Certified Trainer, and he's also a Microsoft MVP. And uh, he's gonna share uh, a lot more about Copilot Studio. How do you get started? And how do you make most out of it? And before we kind of dive into it, we also have Nuria, who's joining us Code Without Barriers Ambassador, and she is going to talk a little bit about Code Without Barriers and what they've been doing. So I would like to invite Nuria to get started. Okay, thank you so much, um, Sarag. Um, I'm just sharing my screen with a presentation. Let me know if it's visible. Mm, yes, it is visible. Perfect. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Code Without Barriers virtual meetup session today with Staiva. Uh, before we get started with the main topic of today's session with Andre, um, I'd like to introduce myself and the Code Without Barriers program. My name is Noria Puri. I am the program manager for Code Without Barriers, uh, looking after all of Asia Pacific. Um, I've been a part of this program for the past few months, um, and I do need to say that every single day I learn of new ways that this program is changing the lives of women developers, and I'll get right into it from here. Um, I'd like to first start off with essentially our mission statement, which is essentially threefold, which is focused on innovation, closing the gender gap, as well as building a platform towards an inclusive economic growth. The main word I'd like to emphasize here is inclusivity. We noticed that people who develop today's new age technologies sometimes don't look at all facets, such as gender and race, resulting in negative consequences in how technology is developed. Therefore, by building in diversity in the developer data and AI teams, we aim to find tech solutions that are inclusive for society and can help bridge the gender gap as well. As we can see in the World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap Report of 2024, we noticed that only 28.2% of the STEM community is of women. We also noticed that the number of women in tech leadership roles is still quite low and requires the support of developers and strategic business thinkers alike to be able to help reduce this gender gap. Findings show that women tend to feel less confident about their abilities and whether they will succeed in these senior leadership positions, especially if they don't feel confident or they don't feel that they have the required skilling requirement for them to succeed in this particular industry domain. Which is why uh, in 2021, we created the Code Without Barriers program. The program, first launched in ASEAN, has now spread to other regions of Asia Pacific, including Australia, New Zealand, India, Japan, GCR, as well as the Korea markets. Through this program, we hope to reduce the gender gap by providing female developers the chance to upskill in data and AI, be a part of our mentorship program, and finally put their theoretical upskilling knowledge into real life industry aligned scenarios during our annual hackathon. On the screen, you can see some of the impact numbers that we have achieved till date. Last year alone, we upskilled 38,000 women developers in cloud, AI, and security. We had over 1,000 mentees who were matched with mentors of thematics that were pertinent to their career growth. We had over 23 events and had a participation rate of 4,500 participants in our annual hackathon with 63 successful project submissions. Some of the prizes at our hackathon also included jobs and internships with our strategic Microsoft customers and partners as well. Speaking of, uh, the individual journey of the female developer can be seen in this diagram I'm showing. We use our existing Microsoft customer and partner, as well as open source community ecosystem to provide opportunities to these women. Women are upskilled and certified on Microsoft technologies. They are matched with an industry expert through our mentorship program, and they are provided opportunities to network through our community meetup events, 
such as this one, to further expand their horizon in the tech sector. Through our customers and partners, we provide these women unique internship and hiring opportunities that are exclusive for Code Without Barrier members. Being a part of this journey also gives you access to a pool of speakers that are not just within the Microsoft ecosystem, but outside as well, as long as they're aligned with the thematic of your choice. As an example, today we have Andre, who is an MVP and has certain knowledge that you may not be able to find on your own. So we provide an end-to-end -end opportunity for these Code Without Barrier women as well. Here are some of the partnerships that we had last year. Um, some of the big names included Petronas, Prudential, HCL, as well as Accenture. And this year too, we are looking to expand this list even further and try to be as inclusive as possible, even in the partners we are onboarding. Last year, we had many in-person community meetups with our local community partners. And this year, we are looking to expand further by introducing virtual meetups, such as this one, to make it as accessible and inclusive in terms of who all can participate in our meetups as well. The meetups are a great way for you to be able to network with your peers and network with industry leaders to learn more about how you can contribute and give back even within your own career journeys as well. We've had many success stories at Code Without Barriers, but the one that really stands out for me and you know, as I learn more about the different women we have impacted, um, the story of Sankari that you're seeing on the screen has really resonated and impacted me as well as a lot of my colleagues. Sankari essentially took a 20 year professional break for personal reasons. And she decided in 2023 to join our Code Without Barriers program, upskilled herself on Microsoft AI technologies, and even won our hackathon in 2023. She went on to finding a job as a data analyst through our customers and partners, and she's now one of our champions who gives back to the community and assisting other female developers who would also like to get back into the game as well. We have had many more of these types of success stories, and we continuously keep impacting the lives of women as well. Sometimes these women are people who have taken career breaks. They might be wanting to switch careers, or they might just generally be wanting to upskill to be up to date on the latest Microsoft technologies or in the world of AI as well, which is rapidly changing. We have seen an impact across all of these different groups. We encourage you all to share your experiences with Code Without Barriers on social media and also help spread the work to others that you might know who would benefit from this program as well. With that in mind, I'm sharing with you two QR codes that would be of most relevance to you. The first QR code is our Code Without Barriers website, which will take you to our registration form. We do encourage you to please complete the registration form so that you can join our community. The second QR code is our Code Without Barriers LinkedIn group. In both of these, on both of these platforms, we will be sharing with you uh, updates in terms of the next meetups, networking opportunities, hiring opportunities, or any upskilling initiatives that we might be doing throughout the year. You will find all of these informations on these groups. So I highly recommend for you to please join them as well. With that, um, I'd like to bring this part of the session to a close. Um, I thank you all for joining in today and also being a part of our Code Without Barriers community. Um, I'm hoping that this is not just a one-time participation, but we look forward to seeing you in our other events as well. Um, I'd like, like to hand it over to Andre, who will be speaking about the Copilot Studio. Um, so thank you again as well for your time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so first things first, apologies if for some reason my image is not that perfect, but I am in a hotel room 
so sorry about that. Um, one quick addition. So I, I'm very happy to to hear about these opportunities. Uh, one of the one of the things that uh, uh, that exist is not uh, is not just in that area of the world, but also in other areas of the world. There's other opportunities. Uh, it's uh, it's too much of a list to to mention, but always good uh, to reference. Another additional thing that I would also like to bring out is that um, there is a lot of situations of people who have disabilities and um, nowadays with the AI, we're going to talk about AI in a second. Uh, with AI, we have a lot of possibilities of uh, guaranteeing that any of the any of the disabilities that anyone might have, any of the limitations do not become uh, an actual um, uh, barrier to to do whatever uh, people want to do. So in this case, uh, it is perfectly possible to use AI. Copilot is an example of that, uh, and we can actually use AI uh, to help out uh, people to you know uh, to do whatever they need to do and to to be great at it. In fact, I know uh, a lot of people who are blind, and they are system administrators, developers, uh, and this is perfectly okay if you cannot hear. For instance, this is not a limitation as well. You have things like subtitles that are very easy. If for some reason you cannot speak, and I've had situations where I had some difficulty speaking because, you know, issues with my voice, uh, that happens. And, you know, the solution is use AI to generate uh, a voice. It doesn't really sound very good, but it is a voice. Uh, and for all of other um, uh, disabilities that you might find, you also have technical solutions uh, to help. So we are in a world of AI where everything uh, is just made easy. In fact, uh, if you go to the chat uh, five minutes ago, you see that quite a few people decided to cheat and get some AI bots to come in and check out uh, the things and take notes. That is cheating. You cannot do that. That is wrong. Uh, that is what people uh, wanted to do at school. That's just very wrong. But okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully all, all of this technology will be put to good use and help out everyone in all of scenarios. One specific one that I wanted to bring out since we're talking about the examples of schools is uh, when you have some neurological disabilities and you have some difficulty uh, learning. So uh, Copilot will definitely help you with this. Well, Copilot and AI in general will definitely help you um, come up with a better strategy uh, for you to be able to learn uh, new things. Okay, having said that, um let's um let's just share my screen and uh, continue uh, i always like to talk about these topics because these are topics that are very close to my heart so are always a good thing to uh, to mention but okay so first things first um, I'm not sure how many people know what Copilot is. Even I don't know exactly what Copilot is. It gets difficult to determine, to be honest. Um, but uh, nowadays, Copilot is pretty much using um, uh, AI technologies to help our lives become a bit better. Now, I'm not sure if this is easy um, or if this was easy five years ago. Uh, this was unthinkable. Five years ago, uh, we had things like Cortana, Alexa, some of the other ones. Uh, and uh, these were very, um, how do I say, very limited. Uh, so... Um, uh, there are pretty much two types of bots, if you want to go for that. There's the intelligent bots that answers questions in an intelligent, natural language way. These are what we have now as Copilot. And there's also the other bots that were just programmed, so a whole bunch of ifs. And they answered some questions, they had predefined answers. Uh, this is what Alexa, what Cortana used to be. Nowadays, what we want is something intelligent that takes our answers and makes it uh, more of a natural language thing, not always repetitive, but a more natural language thing. So we'll see how we can do that with Copilot Studio. We have actually both options, to be honest. Uh, we can do both, but we'll see how this is how this is possible. Okay, so let's uh, move on. So first things first, this is my cat. And my cat uh, is probably at home sleeping or doing something destructive in my house. Uh, sadly, I'm not with her, but usually she is with me when I do these kind of sessions. And this is me. My name is Andrea Moncia. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. And I usually go all around the world uh, doing uh, sessions, training, consulting, etc. But what I really like to do is this kind of crazy things. So we'll see. 
Okay, and the session today is a crash course into Copilot Studio. The fact that we have a car in front of us uh, does not mean anything, but well, it actually does because I'm going to try to do all of these live demos with one specific thing that's very critical uh, and anything can go wrong. So we'll see what happens. It, they can really, really go wrong. So we'll see how bad this can go. Okay, so um, some of these slides you might have seen in some of my other presentations, but it's worth mentioning just the same. So Copilots, it's basically a marketing name for anything AI. And in fact, Microsoft at this moment has about uh, actually more than 100 different Copilots. It's a crazy name. So I have a list coming up, but the name is, uh, is just crazy. Anyway, um, so um, actually the second one becomes very interesting to the ones uh, who are taking notes. Uh, I've started to see that note taking a few months ago and it feels very wrong because it is okay for you to use AI to take notes. Just don't tell everyone that you are doing that at the very least because yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. Anyway, um, one of the things that I've seen, which is very, very interesting is this, um, uh, having, I want AI to do my laundry and dishes so that I can do art and writing. I don't want the AI to do the art and writing itself. And then I have to do my own dishes. So we, we need to use AI and we need to use, you know, robots. We need to use, uh, technology to do the, the things that are very boring and the creative things, uh, which, uh, makes us good as humans, this is how we excel, those things we should actually be doing ourselves, not letting AI do it for us, okay? And remember, things like DAL-E uh, from OpenAI, which you can easily use in any of your applications, uh, will not generate anything new. It will generate things that look similar to things that the, the model has already seen. So it's not going to invent something new. And the fact that you, you simply have so many things that it has seen almost makes it look like it's inventing new things, but it's actually not, okay? So uh, simplifying boring work, that should be uh, a good idea, although we know that this is not going to be the case. Okay, so uh, a few more things to, to mention. I'm gonna mention this very quickly because most people might already know this, but if not, feel free to have a look at my, one of my other sessions and have a look at this. Now, uh, in most machine learning, we have things like regression, which is when you have a line and you try to find an individual value like 17.5 degrees of temperature or something like that. You wanna find a number in the middle of a line or you wanna do classification, so it's either true or false, so you get the bank loan, you don't get the bank loan, or it can be A, B, or C. So it's like individual classes that you can use. That would be classification. And then you have things like clustering, association, etc. If you go to a supermarket, they will recommend things for you. Uh, if, uh, and this, I just got a message uh, because yesterday I was in a dinner with, with a few people and we talked about a certain topic, doesn't really matter what it is. And that person sent me a message saying, oh, I've been getting a lot of advertising about that topic now. Uh, so clearly, uh, you know, Big Brother is listening, AI is listening. It's actually not AI, it's a whole bunch of underworld kind of things that take your information and use it for advertising and, and for them to get money itself. So uh, they use some of these things to associate um, you know, uh, things that other people wanted to buy to things that you want to buy so that they are as effective as possible. Anyway, we want the actual large language models, and this is the part that we are here for. Now, um, large language models, there's quite a lot, so it's not just um, OpenAI and uh, GPT, or if you prefer the chat GPT website that you can actually use. Um, GPT models, generative pre-trained uh, transformers, are uh, just one of the many models. You also have uh, Facebook Llama. So Llama, you know, Llama, it's like an animal, okay? So if you're not familiar with a Llama, it's an animal that's, well, you have the camel, which has two humps. Then you have a dromedary that has one hump, and then you have a llama, no humps, okay? And they spit a lot on you, on your face. So they're, they're experts at this, uh, which honestly, uh, if you consider Facebook uh, naming this, um, makes perfect sense for what Facebook is, no comment. Okay, 
<laughs> so, but anyway, Llama also exists. You also have Watson X from IBM, and there's many others. Like uh, you also have uh, um, uh, for AWS, you also have Bedrock. They call it Bedrock. I assume it's like the Flintstones, where they are very, very much behind, like in the prehistoric times. But you know, that's just me. Uh, so all of these large language models can actually be used to train um, uh, to 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 answer questions. The training itself uh, takes weeks, months, uh, some time. You have the big language models, the large language models, like the ones I mentioned, but you also have small language models, and you can use those small language models in something as small as a phone. Okay, and uh, one example of that is Phi three. Microsoft created something called Phi three P H I three, like in the Greek letter for phi, uh, and that can actually uh, have a small footprint, and that actually handles language, but it doesn't handle knowledge. So uh, with GPT models, you actually have knowledge, which is interesting. Anyway, uh, so uh, I was mentioning uh, chat GPT, etc. Nowadays, you see so many people who are using uh, GPT models and saying, oh, yes, yes, I do AI. Well, you ask chat GPT, you ask Bing Chat or Microsoft Copilot. That's not using AI. That's just being lazy. OK, well, it's not being lazy. It's using a specific tool. Uh, but that does not qualify you to use AI. Using AI requires uh, a, a bit more. So one of the things you can use is the Copilot tool we we're going to bring up, uh, which actually helps you take that AI and put it to a specific use, uh, which is a more, let's call it, professional use of that AI. It's not just asking questions, getting answers. Anyone can do that. Uh, a 10 year old kid is doing that for, for the school homework at this moment. OK, so that's not really, oh, uh, I'm an AI expert. No, you're not. Uh, if you just use ChatGPT. OK, so anyway. Uh, a few uh, things to mention. So if you are using pure large language models, they are not intelligent. So they don't uh, have any extra knowledge about you. They just copy the information from the internet and they use it to show you the results. If there's contradictory results, they will just take the results that are in the bigger quantity. OK, uh, so that could be good or bad, but there's a lot of conspiracy theories. And if they uh, they get promoted that much, they actually become true in the face of these large language models. So that's uh, complicated. OK, so let's have a look um, at a few things. So what is uh, data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc.? Uh, that is the kind of thing that you see here. This is a perfect analogy where uh, in this scenario, you have a perfectly valid sandwich. So there's bread, there's bread on top, there's ham, and there's cheese in the middle. So by definition, this is a real sandwich, although we know it is really not because it's just complicated. But if you ask uh, a computer, that by the rules is a sandwich but we have one factor missing that the computer doesn't have which is the human factor which is the social factor so if you go somewhere uh, on a restaurant and you ask for a sandwich and someone gives you this you might think well you follow the rules but you know how am i supposed to eat this that doesn't seem very practical uh, so there's the social norms that we have that, that account for the behavior of humans that the computers have not mastered at this point. They have mastered a few, but uh, only the ones that you can explain in words. This one, for instance, which is a very visual thing, is sometimes difficult for a computer to understand. OK, now we are getting into the Copilot Studio, but I'll also mention a few other uh, Copilots and bots. OK, so of course you have ChatGPT and everyone knows it started off as using GPT-3, GPT-3.5, GPT-4. And now I have no idea what they are using, um, but uh, the same thing happened with Bing Chat. So initially this was just Bing Chat or chat.bing.com. Uh, then they turned it into Microsoft Copilot, and now visually it's a completely different website, um, which has less things. That's a bad thing, but okay. Um, and those uh, also started to use GPT, let's say 3.5, then GPT 4, which was nice. They are free, which is very good. So if you want the pro version of OpenAI, it's more complicated uh, and you have to pay for it. But with Microsoft Copilot, you have the free version that searches the internet, that does a lot of different things, and that is actually very good if you want to use it as copilot 365 so the name or 365 copilot depends 
on which day the marketing team decides one way or the other. Uh, but the, the Copilot 365 actually allows you to not just ask questions, but to enable and disable some plugins like uh, get information from the internet or get information from some third party system that is connected to your system or simply get information from your email, from your uh, OneDrive, OneNote, uh, Teams, for instance, if you want to get a transcription of what happened in a Teams meeting, as long as you know certain things are enabled in your organization, let's not go there, uh, you are able to uh, get all of those things going. Uh, now, specifically, all of these copilots, there's a lot of them. Uh, there was no guarantee that they use GPT-4. So Microsoft possibly is using GPT-4, but behind the scenes, they might be using uh, a model which is uh, Microsoft internal. We really don't know. It doesn't really matter because from our point of view, we just care something that works. And if it works, no one's going to complain. If suddenly it stops working, you know, people are going to say, oh, something's wrong, something's wrong. And then Microsoft might say, oh, we tried a different GPT model, didn't work that well, we're going back to something. That's what I assume might happen in the future. But at this moment, it doesn't really matter for us. As long as things work, we're happy and they just work. Now, there's um, a few bots which are um, the predecessors of what Copilot Studio is now. So there used to be something called Power Virtual Agents, which was, uh, and you still do this, so we can have a look at this uh, from the beginning and then expand to what now Copilot Studio is. Um, and these Power Virtual Agents initially were just a, a set of workflows that you would go and have a few topics. So if there was a keyword that you would use, they would be triggered by that keyword and then they will start a workflow, uh, a sequence of things like sending you a message, asking you a question, doing some actions and then finishing up uh, and you know moving on to the generic bot part. Uh, and this is a very set of ifs. So we joke about things like, oh, but AI sometimes is just a whole bunch of ifs. In this case, the old power virtual agents was literally just a bunch of ifs. The Azure bots that used to be called Azure web uh, bots and before that they even have different names uh, but the Azure bots were also the exact same thing the difference is that power virtual agents were very graphical visual we'll see how that looks like in a second and Azure bots was basically code so you could do it in C sharp you could do it in other languages that were code but in the end both of these were just ifs but we want to extend that and give more possibilities and to actually add generative AI allows you to be more intelligent. And in the case of Copilot Studio, Copilot Studio is the next version of Power Virtual Agents that allows not only all the things that it did before, like the se sequence of tasks. For instance, let's say you wanted to buy a plane ticket. Uh, you would say, buy plane tickets. And they would say, okay, from where are you flying from? And then next question is, where are you flying to? Which date do you want to fly, etc.? So all of these sequences of questions would, would trigger a workflow. That would be an actual workflow. Uh, and then towards the end, you would say, okay, we're sending this to some web service or some, some database or something like that to actually record that you have a ticket. And then there's the payment part, but you know, somewhere in the middle, you would have to pay, but this would be fine. So the idea is very, very simple. You can do all of this. Now, uh, nowadays with Copilot Studio or Power Virtual Agents, but also these robots, you have something called a channel. And you can associate this just with a normal website. So sometimes you have uh, you know, a chat bot in a corner to say, can I help you with something? And then you would, you would answer some things. The old ones used to be very, very boring, but nowadays they become more intelligent. Uh, but uh, in any case, you can use that one. You can use Teams itself as a connector um, and you, uh, sorry, as a channel, and you would be able to use it and uh, interact with one of these co-pilots using Teams itself. It's very easy uh, to do that as well. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But at the same time, uh, you would be able to associate this either with your own website or with Facebook or with Slack or with some of these other um, you know, technologies and social networks in a very simple way. So this would allow you to uh, use these co-pilots in a lot of places. For instance, if you go to Facebook, you start some, some page for some company. Sometimes you get a pop-up in the messenger that says, welcome, welcome to our page. Would you like some help? That, first of all, is very intrusive, of course. 
uh, but at the same time, this can be easily done with these uh, with these uh, co-pilots uh, that used to be called Power Virtual Agents, and now they are called Copilot Studio. Okay, so we'll have a look at how this is going. In any case, these uh, these are uh, from something called the bot framework. So the programming is where you see the bot framework in action because it's the you actually see it in Power Virtual Agents behind the scenes. They actually have the the bot framework. They the, I assume they still do, uh, but uh, in, when you add the Copilot Studio, now you have some extra things that make it like, oh, I don't even worry about what the bot framework is, but um, from a practical point of view, you still have all of that sequence of things that you have to do. Okay, so um, another thing, don't rely on these bots for critical things, so if you are a hospital, Please, please, please don't put people associated with a, a machine that saves your life and then use a co-pilot to interact with the machine. Please don't do that. So, okay, you know, uh, that could go terribly, terribly wrong. Okay, so I mentioned about, uh, you know, uh, extra information and uh, all of these AI will just take as much information as it can and it will believe things. If 51% of the websites said that this was a true thing and honestly, it's very believable, you know, uh, you have a more difficult time proving this than the actual flat earth theory. Although, uh, uh, let's let's leave this up for a different discussion to, to say, how would you prove this? Um, uh, how would you prove this is not true but this is this is fun to do later uh, but in any case um and the idea here is that there's information uh there there is the information that you have on the internet which can be true or false but you will also have the information from your own infrastructure from a sql database from your office 365 let's say from your email from uh from microsoft graph which is pretty much what gets all the information for all uh, 365 in a centralized api uh, but you also can get information from things like dataverse which is pretty much a database that is used for Power Platform, including uh, Copilot Studio, and also for things like Dynamics. But you can use it for many other things as well. Uh, so all of those, you can you can extract information from there, from a simple SQL database, from a storage account, etc. You can get information from anywhere you would like. Okay. Now, just a quick list of Copilots, and this list is like six months old but you know since then they someone said that there's more than a hundred co-pilots so i just say uh, whatever at this at this stage because there's so many because it's difficult just for reference so the co-pilot which is part of bing which is very useful and free uh, you have the 365 co-pilot which is a single name but then inside of it the licensing allows you to access many other things power platform also has um so that one would be the scary one, uh, which costs money. Uh, you also have Power Platform. So the actual Power Platform, when you create a bot like this, you can actually use uh, um, a co-pilot to help you build this other co-pilot that you are building. So you can use it to give you some pointers, to give you some help. But you also have co-pilot in uh, things like Excel, PowerPoint, etc. Uh, you have co-pilot in Teams, which is nice. Security co-pilot as well, which is also very practical to browse through all the logs. And there was many more, of course. Uh, but you also have Windows co-pilots. Um, which associates with your Windows uh, computer and allows you to do um, many things. Uh, you probably saw uh, Copilot on Edge. This is pretty much just the same as the Bing Copilot, but uh, it is integrated into Edge. But in theory, it should be similar. Uh, I'm not sure if at this moment there's any differences, but it used to be exactly the same. Now, there's also GitHub Copilot, and this is very nice. So um, many of you might be students or still be students. And if you have access to your uh, student account uh, at your university, you can request a free uh, GitHub Copilot license, and this is actually very nice. So you are able to use it uh, completely for free, and you know just have fun with it, work uh, work with it. So that is a good idea. Uh, how do you do it? You just search online, just use Bing, search online for GitHub Copilot uh, for students, 
That's as simple as that. I have no idea what the link is. Uh, I did it only once, but and it worked, so that's fine. And then every year you have to, you know, confirm that you are still a student. Anyway, we also have the Azure Copilot um, uh, um, on the Azure portal, which is actually very, very nice for us to be able to do some interaction with all of the infrastructure we have there. Um, list all of the virtual machines that I have in the West Europe region. That could be an example. So they will show you all of the machines there. They actually create something called the Custo Query Language Query, which is not that different from a SQL query. And it allows you to list all the infrastructure using that specific language that's actually used in all of the Azure portal to manage uh, to manage all of the infrastructure. So uh, one other thing that I need to bring up. So there's plugins, there's extensions, agents, etc. Um, so some of these are similar things, plugins and extensions. Sometimes it's a marketing name that gives you different names. Nowadays they also have agents. They call them agents. So some of these are just marketing names for the same thing. Um, but basically, uh, if you have the 365 copilots uh, that allows you to interact with uh, with your emails, etc., uh, when uh, the professional one, the one that costs about 30 euros of license per per user per month, something like that, um, that one allows you to add plugins. Which one plugin is uh, look it up on the internet? The other plugin can be look it up on Dynamics, look it up on you know some uh, some third party system. So you can add your own plugins, you can create your own plugins, and that makes it very easy. So if you have clients that use some information system that you have, create a plugin uh, or an extension, whatever that's called these days, uh, you create one that allows uh, 365 Copilot to interact with it and uh, to be able to get extra information for your clients as well, but through that Copilot. So it's not expensive. In fact, it's actually quite cheap to do it like that. Okay, now, but we're going to talk about. Uh, let me just bring this up, and then we'll we'll talk about the the actual things. Now, for three six five copilots, what you actually have is that it works like this. You have an app, let's say Excel or something like that, uh, and you oh, it could be Outlook as well. So you request some data from copilot. Copilot will use uh, the LLM to to try to understand what you want, and then it will go to the Microsoft Graph and try to get information from the graph, like have a look at your previous emails, have a look at uh, all your information, uh, which is relevant, of course, and it has all the security things, so no 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 question about that. Uh, and then it will go back, uh, send it to an LLM again, and say, okay, with all the information in a raw format that I'm providing you, give a nice human answer. In in terms of text, and then the information goes all the way back. So that part is the easy part. What's missing here is besides accessing the Microsoft Graph, you can also access some of those plugins as well. So it's not listed here, but in fact, you actually have that possibility. Okay, so uh, those plugins would be this. So you have Copilot, the plugin. You also have something called a graph connector. So that goes directly into this graph. So you attach it here and it's ready to use. So instead of calling the plugin directly from Copilot, you just add that to a list of knowledge that the graph actually has. So in the end, you will end up doing the similar thing, just in different, in different ways. Now, all of this is very nice, but we want to focus on Copilot Studio. So it's important to know the distinctions between all of this so we don't confuse Copilot with Copilot with Copilot with Copilot. They're all called Copilot, very confusing. Anyway, uh, so uh, remember that don't exaggerate on how much you automate with all of this. So if you automate everything and the bots take over, uh, after a while, pretty much, uh, you know, Skynet will, uh, you know, try to kill everyone, which is really bad. And you need the cats to be able to destroy the wires and, you know, turn off everything. So that's what cats jobs are like since, you know, ancient, ancient Egypt, the cats are there to save us. Anyway, let's have a look at uh, Copilot Studio, okay? And this was called uh, formerly Power Virtual Agents, of course, and they use OpenAI. There's also the AI Studio, but for that, we will get back to that if we have some extra time towards the end, okay? So let's have a look. So first of all, uh, how do you do it? Um, there is something called admin.microsoft.com in your tenant. You need to have access to Power Platform to do this. Uh, but you can try a trial um, developer tenant. So if you go um, one second, let me see if I can find the address of that. Uh, so developer dots, um, 
Microsoft.com. It's actually not this one. So developer.microsoft.com somewhere. So if you go here, somewhere there's going to be a product which is 365 and then somewhere there i'm not exactly sure where this is but somewhere down here i used to have this link memorized uh, join the developer program so if you click on this one and the address is here so this is uh, just for your reference um well let me just do something useful and put this into the chats for everyone okay if you are watching this later, well, just copy paste from the address. Um, hopefully this is fine. Um, so, oh, sorry, here. So um, you can create your own tenant, play around with it, and it renews automatically. And some of these things are things that you can try. Now, you will need to create a user for this. I created a user in case my current user goes terribly wrong because it has a problem, which is the trial expires today. So let's see if... Yeah, we're still in time to try it. But anyway, there's a few things. This is for Copilot 365. But then if you go here to all admin centers, you can actually manage the Power Apps admin center, which if you go down here, it's the same as the one for Power Automates. So the address is the same. So then you go here, it's actually this address. And then from here, all you have to do is to make sure that you have at least one environment where you can use these kind of things because all of these power platform things they belong to an environment we don't need to do many more things here okay the only reason i want to show you this is that sometimes you have to manage things like data policies because you might have to associate uh, some some ins and outs between uh, power virtual agents power automate etc some things are not permitted for instance, in that developer tenant, you are not allowed to send emails to people. You can send them internally to your tenant, but you cannot send it to the outside world because otherwise people would use it for spam. So these kind of policies are things that you might have to go back here to actually change them if needed. But apart from that, most of these things, you don't have to change them. But it is a good idea to know that they exist. Okay. Now let's go for this one. And I have a small problem here. As I mentioned, this trial expires today. It is really Really accidental because you know I set it up like 60 days ago or something like that but let's have a look now I already have three copilots here okay however I will try to create one new one it takes about five minutes during that time I'll have a look at some of these other ones okay now you can create a new agent from scratch now they call it copilot they call it agent it's a weird naming thing but just it's the same thing it's a bot okay and uh, from here you can select some of these that already exist Case management. So if you have multiple uh, situations and you can handle each case like this, store operations, retail, like buying things, selling things, website for Q&A. This one is incredibly simple, probably the one we can try, one for weather, and then there's a few others. Some of these say coming soon, but that is still fine. You can test the voice with Copilot with this one if you want to. But then obviously these are just examples. These are templates. You can try them out, see if it works, if it doesn't work, and then work it out. Okay, let's uh, let's try website Q&A. And let's say um, Star uh, Wars bots. So simple thing, okay? Description, a Copilot that can answer questions. This is just a description. Um, answer questions about star wars okay so that's fine knowledge base so you have microsoft knowledge base but let's add a different knowledge base and in this category you probably heard of this thing called star wars fandom etc uh, which is the wikipedia okay so uh, we can actually go here and by the way um even though we're going to try, it's not going to look that good. So public websites, it's not going to look that good. And let me explain why. Because there's so much information about about uh, Star Wars on the internet that having the link here might not actually help get more information. It's already public. But let's pretend that this is a thing anyway. So owner, let's say, uh, let's, let me pretend that I'm the owner. Let's say I confirm uh, I'm not the owner, but you know you don't have to do the checkbox, but that helps. Uh, but anyway, so I have some content. Okay, now I can create the bots. Now this is going to take a few minutes. Let's assume five minutes. We'll come back to this. Okay. Now there is more. So let me just go and start my own. Oh, agents is ready. Okay. Uh, tell me about 
Chewbacca. Now I'm assuming that the information here is from the internet, not so much from the from the the agent, but still, uh, you should get. It's actually, it might take a bit more time than this, so it feels ready. But I think it it seems like it might be a repetition of a type. You meant to ask about a specific character, such as Chewbacca. Please let me know. Uh, yes, tell me about Chewbacca. Uh, okay, so blah, 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 Chewbacca, blah, blah, blah. Where did I get this information? Actually, it knows it is from the Wikipedia. So it comes from the Wikipedia that I just created. So it's actually not coming from the internet. It's really telling you it's coming from here. So just like this, in two minutes, you already created a bot that if you provide a link, which... You know, it doesn't have to be exposed to the world. It can be just for you. And as long as, you know, this uh, this uh, power platform thing can see it, you can specify the, the, the permissions, etc. Uh, you can actually generate some data that actually shows up here and you can answer questions about uh, your company. Now, let's have a look at all the topics that we have. How does this work? So the bot itself answers questions. But to do that, it uses something called topics. OK, so those topics, you can actually go here and uh, say goodbye. So if you say something like goodbye, let's try it out. Goodbye. Uh, it uses phrases like uh, hello, uh, goodbye, etc. And then it says, oh, would you like to end the conversation? So let's try it. I'll click on OK. It's highlighted this one. And then you can go here, condition. It's equal to, let me just get rid of this one to have a bit more space. OK. Um, so conversation is equal to true. Would you like to end the conversation? Now, we're getting to interesting things because now I have a question. And that question, I say it's Boolean. So true or false or yes or no. OK. And then if the answer, if the condition is true, and remember how create this. Well, you click on the plus button and you say add a condition, which is this branching to yes, no, etc. Or you can say, ask a question, which is the one that we just have here. This was generated automatically, but I could have created this myself, okay? Or um, let's say you have this condition. So if it is, if the end conversation variable, and this is a variable, because the save user response is a variable. And this is the part that sometimes we get confused because how do we know which answer it is? Maybe we ask three questions, how do we know the answer? They actually create these variables and you have a list of variables here that you can find out, but you can also have the variable here, okay? So if you say all other conditions, so if, you want, uh, if I wanna add, actually let's say if I wanna add a message, okay? So if I wanna add a message here and I wanna add a condition, this one is gonna be false, of course, but if I say insert variable here, I'm going to insert the variable in the texts. So some texts is, and then a hash sign, and then I'm closing off with a hash sign so that, you know, it fits in the middle. Okay, it's just the texts. Okay, so if I try this and now I say no, what I'm going to get is this message. Go ahead, I'm listening. Some text is no. So that was the answer to that variable that said end conversation, okay? This is a simple example of a variable, but you can have variables that are text, variables that are other formats as well. So this is incredibly easy, okay? So in this case, redirect to something called end of conversation, which might ask you, are you happy with the bot or something like that? But in this case, they just say, go ahead, I'm listening. And then it stops here and allows you to continue to ask more questions. And then you come back to these topics. So these topics get selected once again, and you choose something else now. But this is not the best uh, copilot. Let's go to a different one. Now, this one I generated as a generic one with some examples. And this one has things like simple topics, etc. These are usually nice. So conditions, we've seen conditions. OK, so conditions we've seen. So phrases, find the nearest store to me. And then which store are you interested in? Now, this one would be multiple choice, okay? So I can have multiple choice and they suggest three different stores. So now I can say, find store close to me, okay? So that triggers something here. And then, oh, to clarify, did you mean, uh, this one is at lesson two. Okay, so why isn't this perfect at this moment? Because it's not using the generative AI uh, for the full usage. It's just using ifs at this moment. So this part is not even intelligence. It's just finding things that are similar to this, not being intelligent. How do you enable the intelligence? Well, uh, you can enable it 
by the way you can click here on settings i'm doing this in a different window so you get the settings and agent details which is name etc so you can give it some name some icon you know whatever generative ai you can enable this to say generative ai click on save and then from this point on now it becomes a more intelligent oh one seconds okay uh, becomes a more intelligent thing and if i say find stores close to me again uh, let's restart by the way let's restart this so if i say ask find stores close to me then it might be a bit more intelligent to find exactly what it wants now uh, it didn't ask me again which store that i want it used the intelligence to understand that all of these were the same as what i meant notes um uh, so this one was less than two, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So we were here. So now I triggered this one, but it used AI to find the best answer, got to this, and now I'm stuck at the uh, at the choice. Now choices are multiple choice, like three. And then if it is this one, in this case, you just get a message saying, oh, the opening hours are this or that, okay? So these are each of the opening hours, our store in a specific place, and the store location is located in something. So now they use a variable because that, that could actually mean store location, could actually mean more than one equals Seattle, but it could be more than one. So they replace this here so you don't have to do an if for each question. So if I say Seattle, I'm actually going to get to this one and then end of conversation and then did that answer your question this part here for end of conversation is already in a different topic okay so if i click on this this is the end of conversation topic it's a different topic and it already says did you uh, did you did that answer your question and then if it is yes you get to evaluate uh, so a very simple thing if not it uh, it says would you like to try again or something like that sorry i wasn't able to help etc so you can do that by the way these answers you can actually analyze the answers in analytics i don't have enough information to 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 show you how good or bad the bot is because it's um you know just a simple test with one or two answers over over time but if you use this long enough you should be able to uh, get answers that people are happy with this people are not happy with this and also usage a lot of people use it not use it specific uh, specific usages specific Specific topics so you can get analytics for all of this in my case the answer will be mostly zero because this is a, a bot that I used one or two times to do demos okay now a few more things to consider so uh, these topics are easy but what about other questions so let's go to a completely different topic okay and let's say um, new topic so I can create the topic from a description on Copilots. Name your topic, live tests, okay? Uh, create a topic that um, has a welcome message, then asks where um, age, um, name and address, and, and country, country, country is easier. Country is easier address is very boring okay so i can say on create and this is hopefully automatic it doesn't work perfectly in many cases it really doesn't but uh let's see so um you actually have here um uh, give me a second again the free trial is very boring um they also tell you oh make sure the delivery message was make sure that this is okay so message welcome welcome message what is your age something and then age is a number so uh, you have to write the numbers if you don't write the number something goes terribly wrong so let's restart so what is the live tests let's call it live tests because that's the name i gave it okay uh, so you should start here welcome to our platform what is your age abc that seems wrong okay um what is your age again so it asks me for my age repeatedly one two three i'm that old okay um and then person name what is your name and then um dude that's fine and then next question which country are you from uh mars is that a real country the live tests okay so they actually allow it but they say country here 
but the country should actually be from the list of countries. So um, in most cases, you have a country lists, okay? Oh, actually, here they didn't ask for a country. They just asked for user's entire response, not an actual country. But if you go here and say, let's have a look, and you can say multiple choice, so A, B, or C, you can do options from a list variable. So the variable comes from before, and you can use it. Maybe there is a list of countries in a table, in a database, something like that. User's entire response is a string. And then you have age, Boolean, city, continent, color as well, but country or region. This was the one I was looking for, but the copilot just asked me for a string. Okay, this is fine. We have dates, we have a few others, and we have um, we have date time without time zone, duration, money as well, which is important, um, organization, person name, uh, state as well. In some cases, this is important, or just a web address in some cases, zip codes, postal codes, something like that. So all of these are interesting because you might want specific things and you really don't want to do the verification yourself. You want it to verify it for you, okay? By the way, you can actually create entities yourself. So let's say if you have a list of products that you want to sell, you can create it as an entity, although products is not the best example for this. But if you want to fix lists of things, so uh, if you have like classes, uh, let's say you rent cars, you can say class A, B, C, or D of types of cars, and you can provide that as an entity, and people will choose from that list. And then you get provided with A, B, C, or D kind of items, which is actually very nice. Now, questions are easy, but what if I want to do something like record things into the into the uh, in, into a database, okay? And to, to show you this, I actually have a database here. So you can start with the Azure portal, go to a SQL database. And just to show you that this is not false, I can go to this database. And from here, I actually have query editor. I have, actually I'll do it in a different way. So instead of doing it from here, I'll actually do it from, let's see if I have it here. I'll actually do it from uh, Management Studio. So you can see that the address is the same, but I have a table that I've created before. And that table, uh, which is this one, has an ID column, which is auto number. Uh, it has the date of insert, date time of insert. And then all I have to do is to add this intelligence text, which is basically a text that I need to add. Now, these are tests that you can imagine I did just before we started. Uh, so let's have a look. Um, and this is what I will try to deliver okay so to do that and i'm running out of time so i don't want to take that much more of your time but i will show you this so logging inserts okay so let's try logging inserts so i just call it log data so we'll we'll uh, give me a second we'll try that one this is a text so i generated this with copilot users entire response what do i want to log so some text whatever it is okay it could be asking three or four different questions and getting a variable for each of them and then putting it all in a database with all of the values in this case what i did is plus sign and then advanced and uh, sorry what a minute not advanced call for an action and then you have a few things here to interact with the outside world. So you can create a flow in not Microsoft Flow, but Microsoft Power Automate, but it's still a flow. Uh, you can create prompting with natural language. You can add the skill. So skill is an extension that you can add for Copilot Studio that allows you to do certain tasks uh, or dynamics as well. But connectors are the same as the ones you have in Power Automate that allow you to do sequences of tasks. And if you search for the one for SQL, there's many others like execute a web service, et cetera. But if you look for the one for SQL, in this case, SQL Server, you have here insert a row, which is the one I'm using. You can say get row and get a row one single row or multiple rows here you can update a row or delete a row sometimes this delete and update row i don't usually trust it that much because you know you never want something as simple but you can always execute it as a sql query update table set something where something is equal to something and replace that with variables okay so if you feel you don't trust the delete row or update row um you know uh, components, which the delete row scares me a lot. You can always execute a SQL query where you make sure that you put the variables there and you have 100% control over it. The wizard is something I don't really like, okay? But to insert row, it's easy enough, so you can do it like this. Uh, 
So let's say that I added that connector in Vincer Pro, server name, database name, etc. So this is a question that they ask, but you need to create the SQL server first. And uh, let's skip that part, but you ask, uh, you know, it will pop up something to tell you uh, what's the server name, database name, username, password, or any other authentication. And then when you get to this point, I can just say, uh, what kind of thing do you want to use? Use connection settings, the default one. Default, default, default. Now, the table is this one. And as soon as you select the table, this gets generated. It shows up here with all of the fields. Now, ID, let's leave it blank. Date of insert, let's leave it blank. They will actually treat this as a null. So when you go to save it, if there's a default, which there is, they will replace it with the default, which is nice. And then the output is the information that something happens. I will show you the results, but it's ugly. And then, yeah. Uh, uh, you could see some results and then get some. Uh, actually, I don't have the results here. I didn't get a chance to try them, but let's let's try them out. So log things. Let's see if this goes into the right one. Okay, so enter some text. Now enter text now. You know, uh, live tests one. Okay, and I can click on okay. And then this was the answer that I got. Dialog, blah, 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 action. Not sure if this is good or bad. We'll find out. Okay. And let's go to this one. And let's try this again. Okay. So, nope. For some reason, this did not work. Okay. Why did this not work? And by the way, I do apologize if this fails. Sometimes it fails. Okay. So, let's try again. I've had a situation or two where this was very delayed or didn't work. Uh, so log live test two, okay. Sometimes I've seen this, okay. So data context now. That this seems like a bit more correct, and let's try it out. Let's try it. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to run this live test two. Okay. So for some reason the other one failed. That's fine. Sometimes it happens. Okay, so now in this case, I, I just wanted a continue button. So you can say multiple choice option and just have a continue button. You could add more options if you want to, but in this case, I just want to stop it right there. Now, if I click on continue, I will just create another one, which is create generative answers. And uh, like where? Okay, so I had better answers before. So the create generative answers, which is advanced create uh, generate answers, is you provide some texts of what you want to do, and that generates a nice answer for you. Like you can say that, oh, I got some of these results from the, which I didn't, by the way, but I got some of these results from here. So you can say get rows, and um, you can go to generative answers and say something like take this variable, which has all the answers that I got, and please generate something nice to display this as a table or something like that. So in the old days, you have to do it manually, but with generative answers, it's actually much easier to do, okay? So let's not do that now because of time limitations, uh, but um, you get the idea on how this can be done. Now, next step, uh, how do you um, publish this now? Um, by the way, if you want to create your own actions, you can also create your own customized actions if you want to reuse them instead of using them only once. I created this here. I didn't get to use it, but I created this here. And at any time, you can go to your topic. And let's choose any topic. Okay. And uh, you can go for, uh, you can go for plus sign anywhere. And then uh, you can go call an action. And then in plugins, you can say insert a row, and then uh, you can have the tarantula inserts here as well if you wanted to. Okay, so uh, so actions is nice to do. Okay, uh, analytics uh, is the one that I mentioned will be mostly empty, but now I care about the channels because I want to publish this to some channel. Okay, now this is going to take a bit of time, so let's ignore it. But the analytics will mostly be empty. Uh, I can send it to Teams, I can send it to a demo website or just a custom website of my own, some mobile apps, some of these other things. But if I just want to put it into a demo website, uh, this channel turned off authentication settings. Okay, well, actually, I would be okay with just not authenticating altogether. Uh, security authentication. I'll be uh, okay. Security, security, authentication. Verify users, no authentication, publicly available and in a channel. 
Okay, yes, that's fine, no worries. Okay, so channels, and I can say a demo websites. Um, did I save it? Yeah, I did save it, didn't I? Uh, no authentication should be fine. Yeah, maybe a refresh. You know, with all of these technologies, you know, we just turn off the computer and turn it on or click the refresh, which is the equivalent in a web page. Okay, but anyway, the idea here is that once you do this, uh, you select the channel, uh, even if for some reason I'm not able to do it, but I should. Now I can. Uh, welcome message. Okay, it can't be as big as this. Conversation start. Let's give you some example. You can copy the address, okay, save, and then you can click on publish, okay, cancel, publish, and this will actually publish the thing, okay, publish. Now I can go here to the address that I was given, and hopefully I get the results. I need to publish it first, but the nice thing is that the result is nice. Uh, sorry, something happens. Oh, I still have to publish it, which is obviously a very big problem, okay? So in this one, being published. So let's take one second to do it. One other thing that I wanted to show you is um, this is one type of agents that you can create, okay? Uh, because we have to wait one or two minutes for this, and I do apologize for this delay. Um, let's try out to do uh, the same thing, but now with OpenAI. These are different. This one is very practical because you can make all sequences and behave exactly as you want so that you can book tickets or do specific tasks. If you just want a generic bot that gives you answers, one of the other ways is you can go to ai.microsoft.com. So AI, let me just refresh this one just in case. Uh, it's to go to ai.azure.com. Um, and in this one, you have the AI studio. You need to create um, an AI service first. So AI service, service. You need to create an AI service first here. And to do that, all you have to do is to create the AI service. So basically, you can go here to Azure OpenAI. You can create one, which is very, very easy. So very, very basic to do. And uh, in this case, uh, the pricing tier, you have only one, although there is one for you know big companies, which is called provision throughput. But basically, you say this, give it a name, and then you are pretty much ready to go to the Azure AI uh, service and create one. Now, I mentioned there were there were multiple, um, you know, large language models, and some of these are just model catalog for 1,700 models or something like that uh, that you have here. So from OpenAI, Phi3, MetaLama, and a few others. Okay, so there's a lot here. But one of the things that you can do is you can actually go here to deployments, deploy one of those models because you created an account and the account is here let's say this one and then you can go here and deploy a model like uh, gpt4 or something like that that's easy enough okay so let's go to chats okay and let's create uh, one bot very very quickly okay and uh, to create it you can just say here give you a second um you you are uh, yoda and speak in the Yoda language. How easy is that? Okay, so you say update system message, and then you say hello. And suddenly you have a bot that answers, hello, young Padawan, how assist you, I can. So uh, obviously different like Yoda. And one of the things you can do is you can click on deploy here as a web app. Now I have a result as a web app, which is something like this. In this case, it's for uh, a bot for Richard Feynman. If I say, hello, who are you? Okay, they will say, oh, I'm Richard Feynman, physicist, uh, theoretical physicist, blah, blah, blah. OK, so you get an answer for this, which is nice enough. OK, so you can create these bots, although this one, it's not openly public. You have to authenticate because, you know, I didn't remove the authentication. Otherwise, everyone would use it. OK, but uh, you can actually try it out um, by creating one yourself. Go to the chat playground and click on deploy. Another thing is that the Copilot Studio allows you to get data from your databases. We saw that we can interact with the SQL databases and others. But if you want to get data from here, you can say add your own data on the site. Now, this requires a, a few more things that I, uh, I really don't have time to talk about today. But basically, you can get information that's on your databases and other information systems into uh, answering things for the bot itself. 
Okay, now wrapping this up. There, okay, there are some issues. So in that case, logging inserts. Yeah, okay. But is the bot failed to publish your agents? Okay. So uh, as everything in any presentation, there are things that fail. This is normal. But please assume that the result would be to go to a place that looked like this and get one of the bots that look like the other one we just saw, like the Feynman bot, and you would ask questions like this, and you would get the answer, okay? So in this case, there was a problem because I created a few examples there that I probably need to delete, so I did a lot of experimentation, and one of them, for some reason, wasn't working, but the end result would be something like this, and it should be working, or if you wanted to, you could actually put it into multiple other channels, and you don't have to limit yourself to one. You can put it in two, three, four, if you want to. It's, it's perfectly okay. Okay, having said that, this is an example of Copilot Studio. We had a few minutes to just look at the OpenAI Studio to see other types of uh, uh, Copilot that you could create as well. Uh, in this case, it's just a simple bot that uses OpenAI uh, to, to interact. And yes, you can do programming yourself, but this is usually coded by you. You can do the programming yourself in C Sharp or in Python or something else to actually use things like functions and a few other usages. Bring your own data if you want to, like uh, that button that was available there, and you can get the data yourself. You can also create your own speech text and text-to-speech using Azure Cognitive Services, very, very easy to do, okay? Uh, additionally, the add your own data was the thing that I mentioned. If you have a bot that's very specific, you can even do fine tuning on the model itself. It costs a bit of money, but if you have like a million people asking you things a day, maybe this, uh, this optimizes your costs and speeds. Okay, function calling, I just mentioned, it's the similar thing as calling some actions and getting data from the outside. This is another way to get the data, okay? Anyway, we're almost at the end, so let's just wrap it up, and apologies for taking a bit of extra time that I expected. Okay, so uh, <laughs> um, let's see if anyone has any questions, okay? Uh, I'm not sure if anyone has any questions, but let's have a look. At any questions in the chats? Okay, Q and A. Okay, so I don't see any questions at this moment, but feel free to let me know if uh, if anyone has uh, any questions uh, um, at this moment now. Okay, if not, okay. Uh, you can always reach out to me. So I am uh, just go to my website, andy.pt. Um, it's pretty much outdated, but uh, you can go there and get my contacts for LinkedIn and things like that. Anyway, I really want to thank you for uh, for giving me the opportunity of doing this session. Uh, remember, co-pilots are the people that fly uh, planes and fly and are on the Next, uh, next to you while you are driving the car and complaining a lot. And you know nowadays even a dog can uh, can fly an airplane if uh, if they have a co-pilot. Okay. So anyway, thank you all very much. Hope you enjoyed the session and you are able to start creating your own bots in the future. Okay. Thank you all very much and see you next time. Thank you, thank you, Andrew, for joining us as well. I really appreciate that. Uh, taking the time to join and uh, sharing all the knowledge. I hope you guys were able to you know, grasp everything that Jopa shared. And um, yeah, I also shared all the link that we so far uh, had shared in the you know during the session. Uh, shared by things that uh, Nuria shared, and uh, also the link to Copilot Studio is in the chat box. And um, yeah, also the certificate link will be also shared in the chat box um, after uh, after a minute that will be shared. That's um, that's it for the day, everyone. I think uh, there is one question. Uh, what's the difference between AI and AGI in a simple way? AI and? So uh, what's the difference between AI and? Uh, uh, I didn't AGI. understand the question. Uh, AI and? AGI, Sorry. I'm not sure. AGI, uh... um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's AGI. I'm not really sure. Uh, to to be honest, I have no idea. So um, let's let's use Copilot to find out. Okay. Uh, so um... it is a uh, <laughs> is artificial general intelligence. Uh, let's find out what AGI is. Okay. Bing artificial general intelligence. Uh, that is a good question. So I'm not really sure. Um, 
I'm not really sure, but let's ask co-pilots. Let's ask co-pilots. Um, so when you don't know, you ask co-pilots. Okay, give me a second because this takes forever apparently. Uh, and um, okay, what's uh, the difference between AI and AGI? That is a good question. Okay, give me a second. I need to sh uh, shrink the size of this. Uh, AGI used if they're interchangeably different concepts, narrow AI, general AI. Uh, so myself, uh, I would say that uh, general AI uh, understand, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that is a good question. I, I haven't heard that question and I really didn't uh, uh, care much about AGI. So I didn't really follow up on this term uh, uh, myself, but apparently according to this, AGI is still theoretical and doesn't exist. So um, uh, should I ask if AGI is something like you have natural intelligence and you have AI intelligence and suddenly the uh, uh, artificial general intelligence becomes Skynet and takes over the world. Is that the case? I'm not really sure. But for things like normal artificial intelligence uh, is the kind of things that we are seeing where we do some training and the end result allows you to get some answers which are a bit more intelligence. But uh, consciousness, things like consciousness don't don't really exist uh, in this kind of um, in, in this kind of environments. Maybe with AGI, there is going to be some some intelligence uh, things, some consciousness thing where they know, they feel, etc. But uh, I, I have a feeling that this is not something that we're going to get uh, running anytime soon. In fact, let me give you a specific example. If you go for a prompt and if you ask something, you get an answer. But if in parallel you ask something, but you said, please, you get a better answer. OK, and this is not because, you know, the AI has feelings and please feels like you're being polite. So let's help out a bit more. No, it's actually that if you go to forums and other places, if people are rude, they usually don't get an answer. If they are very polite, they usually get better answers and people work hard at it. So when you do training, that kind of thing is not a feeling. It's not a sentiment. It's actually because it was trained to provide better answers if you said please. Now, saying things like thank you makes no difference because it doesn't have feelings. So it's a useless use of time. So it's a, uh, it's not going to get you anything other than wasting CPU cycles. But the please part actually uh, sends all of the neurons into, inside of the intelligence part to actually find better answers. So hopefully this is um, uh, my possible answer to that question at this moment. OK. So let me just then share this. OK, any other questions? I think uh, I think that's the. Last of it, yeah. Ooh. OK, any, anyway, uh, any, any questions you have, feel free to, to ask later. I'm always happy uh, to answer any questions in the future. OK. Sure, great. Uh, also, you, I think uh, your uh, links were not shared. Was oh, it? Okay. Uh, so uh, the only yeah, link. Uh, so uh, I can uh, I can put my uh, link here, um, andy.pt. Just go to andy.pt, and that should be fine. Um, and then from there, you have the links for for LinkedIn and for all of the other ones. So feel free to reach out there. That's that's easy enough. You also have developer.microsoft.com where you can create your own tenant. So you go to Microsoft 365, and then somewhere at the bottom, you see start a developer tenants, and that would be okay. Oh, uh, good question. Will the free demo of Copala, how long again will this be available? Uh, so uh, you can create a user, and that user will have a... Um, uh, a test, uh, so it will have a trial. Um, I'm not sure if you can renew it, so we'll find out in a few hours when that actually gets killed, so I'll experiment with that. But in any case, if you create a new user um, in the tenants, that actually gives you the, the possibility of using a free trial as well. So you can, you can try that out uh, with a different user if you want to. If you are in your own company, you can always try a different uh, user just to do these experiments instead of burning a user that's, that's a real user. Okay, so that's an option. Okay, so uh, 
if there's no more questions, once again, thank you very much uh, for being here and uh, hope to meet up with everyone soon. OK, thank you again for having me. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye.